Hello everyone, and welcome to the stage 5 video of Everywhere at the End of Time, where me and Saturn are going to be discussing this stage. It's easily the most chaotic stage yet, and there's so much to talk about in the four tracks here. Hello guys, good seeing you, y'all. Yeah, so there's a lot to discuss with stage 5, so we might as well get right into it. First of all, this stage just begins insane. Immediately, so many different samples begin playing at once. You can hear a voice saying in a dream at the beginning. The static is barely audible because it's instead being replaced with so many different samples being played. You can't really make out any words or songs, it's just this noise. Just like this mess. It's gone from stage 4, where you can hear all these different samples being played fluidly but not too many, and here there's so many. Stage 5 starts off like this, so insane like this. And then, so what do you think of the beginning of Stage 5? The beginning of Stage 5 is really chaotic. Yeah. Um, at the start, you'll hear something thin, uh, in Dream. Yeah. Or, um... Or I'm walking around in a dream, or it could be, was it a dream? I think but it's, it's probably yeah. it's probably a dream, but it starts off very chaotic, different than J1. If you get jump scared by stage five when it's the end of J1, then oh my god, that that probably confused you a lot. Yeah, I've definitely had that happen before. The transition from stage four into stage five is is different from the from three to four because that one was like it goes from depressing to confusion. But now this goes from something calm to something just insane. So it does go on like this for a few minutes, but then we get to something unique. We hear a nice sample, Was It a Dream by Dick Powell. It sounds really nice, but it's such a sad part of the song because just if you've given something peaceful and calm, and you can also hear deleted scenes, forgotten dreams. The melody goes away as soon as you see it, and it dissolves back into the horror and confusion. It's honestly such a sad part. And the fact that it's called the What Is It A Dream segment is so sad. What do you think of this clarity? Well, when the clarity ends, people always say it cuts off right as the chaos begins. No, that is not true. You'll hear it, you can, you will hear it for one to two more seconds when the chaos begins again. It, um, when it keeps happening and everybody thinks it fades away. It does not. It, it keeps, they keep thinking about it for one or two more minutes before it falls into the abyss. Yeah. So the next part of the song, I'm going to skip ahead. It's just insane. It's the amount of samples. This is the point where we reach well over a dozen samples, you can see. We have so many from the entire album so far. We have some familiar ones, like Lullaby of the Leaves. So much playing at once. It's this hum huge mess of confusion. You also hear some whistles in this part, which seem to break through all the other samples. It's such a horrifying part, and they, and they sound so alien and nightmarish, like a scream. It's almost as if the patient is screaming for help amidst all the chaos. There's also a second clarity. I guess I'll play right here. It sounds not nearly as abrupt at first, but has this moment of tranquility, definitely. Reminding me of J1. It's not too bad compared to all the horror. Again, it does sound pretty strange, but it is a break from all of it. Overall, K1 is just such a horrifying track. There's still a lot more to talk about, such as, as we see different samples we'll play from later parts of the tracks. The same thing would happen where J1 would play in G1. What do you think of just everything we've heard so far in K1? Um, it's still very chaotic. Um, 
you wouldn't expect this kind of like you kind of expect it to be just like stage four but a tiny bit worse but no 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 he the caretaker literally put chaotic like put samples of everything i put it very hard to hear and right now where you just zoomed that in the video that guys is the second time where the hell sirens appear just when you thought that they were gone they reappear and it's more of a horror it's just like the first time they really stick out like a thorn th 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 it's such a horrifying part of the song i can't really pinpoint any exact point where the track gets any better because it's just like this the whole time I can admit that the track uh, is very incredible in the way it uses so many different samples and has different clarities. It's so well done, and it's honestly so horrifying. It does start, start to get calmer around section E, but then there is something special we hear at the end. This is probably the calmest part of the track, and that's not really saying much though. A few samples play and they go in and out, but it's not this huge mess of samples like we've seen in the first four sections. But then something else happens when we get to section F, the final part of the track. We hear the mandolin solo. A mandolin? What did you say? I think you might have forgot the whistling. Oh no, I played some of the whistling when it was in section B. Oh, I'm okay, I'm sorry, there's just a big fly in my room, I'm, and I'm, I have fly water in my hand, and I'm waiting for it to come to me so I can smack it. Yeah. So, we hear the mandolin solo here, and a mandolin kind of looks like a smaller guitar or ukulele of sorts. It's really hard to hear at first. It reminds me of the whistling. It sounds like the plucking of an instrument, it's hard to hear. It's an incredible part of the track, but that would be doing a disservice to the rest of it because this entire thing is just this huge mess and there's so much to talk about. What do you think about K1 as a whole and I guess the mandolin solo? No, nobody really thinks about the mandolin solo too much. Yeah. I do hear some um, people talk about it. And when I first heard it, I first heard it was talking, I was like, what? Because I was really confused. Because yeah. I've never heard your music that talks before. And, well, yeah. It's an also a really um, great way to... K1 is, is the, my personal favorite of stage 5. Yeah, I have to agree. It's a great way to end off. And this is a fantastic way to end off the track. Ne next, as if it, it couldn't get any worse, we have the other advanced plaque entanglements. This one might just be the most hard track to hear. What you're hearing right now is what you hear for the entirety of the track. It's the longest out of everything and everything at the end of time, coming in at nearly 23 minutes. Samples will come in like this, and memories are no longer being entangled, but rather erased. I'm not even going to bother pointing out all the samples to you, because we're good at it. Even the video itself doesn't have any timestamps. How could you even make it out of this? What do you think of L1? Well, you know what's cool? I think I think it was in H1 or G1 or... I'm pretty sure it was H1 or G1. I'm not sure. It was kind of like that, where you heard Bell of the East, and it do the same thing like it did at the beginning of L1, where it just fade out for one second, go to the left, do the same thing and go to the right for like for like five seconds yeah it's worth mentioning that l1 i'm pretty sure has 11 separate sections and that's not even counting for the subsections which is crazy but as horrifying as this is just imagine what it's like to be in the late stage of dementia it's so horrifying to have all these memories being entangled in a race and as the way the plaque corrupts the brain is honestly so just horrifying to see. I use that word a lot, but I don't really know how else to describe it. You know?
here at this part we can also see a lot of samples. Like I said, I'm not even going to try to point some of these out. Some samples will play a lot, and we do hear some that are kind of hard to tell. Specifically, a part that's hard to hear, like in the unknown violin in section C. I don't really know what else to say. It's kind of like K1 SA, but you can barely hear any song at all. Do you have anything else to say about L1? Um, not much. L1 is L1 is good, but L1 is more like a rip off of K1. Yeah. <laughs> just like just just dollar store brand K1. Yeah. But it it still has a lot of meaning. Yeah, and there's definitely like so many samples being played and the way you hear these memories being erased. And although it doesn't have any clarities, which is to show that we're just really getting deep into this now. The track gets a little calmer at the end though, in the last two minutes. And I say calm lightly because it's still this mess, but it's not nearly as loud or obnoxious to like, be able to like, live with these. And I think that's a great way we go into M1 Synapse Retrogenesis. So, as if having your memories being taken away from you and becoming abstract and fluid wasn't bad enough, and having them erased, you have the synapse retrogenesis. One of the most bizarre things about dementia for late stage patients is that they'll, they'll regress into a childlike state from the loss of memories and just basic brain functions. The beginning of the song, honestly, is kind of calm, uh, although I say calm lightly. And Hardix does appear here, and overall, it's just such a, there's so much to say about it, honestly. What do you think about M1? M1 is a track that nobody ever talks about. Yeah. Um, that's more for the L1, but M1's also one of those. Yeah. It's like, M1 kind of just like I1, nobody talks about it. Mm. And M M1 has a lot of meaning. This this is the vegetative state. This is this is your brain shrinking. This is this is this is reverse aging. Mhm. Mm it's not even this mess of memories being erased anymore. It's just this cold panning of the void. I guess that'd be a good way to put it. We also hear heartaches quite abundantly, such as that part of mournful camaraderie. Things get slightly calmer in the second section of the track, as the void is, is overtaken by some samples being able to hear, hear kind of clear. We also hear just a few other tracks. There's also some unknown samples we can see in section A here. As we dissolve more and more into this mess, it just becomes more of this void. As you can see here, look at this. Look at the amount of samples that are here. Do you see these? That's basically, that, that's literally the caretaker's whole career. <laughs> yeah, but there are like so many different songs being heard out here. From the previous albums, from Leighton and Johnston, from some even some unknown violins such as the one in g1sd and more of albert benzier who's used a lot in stage four and stage five things get more chaotic in section b here things do get a little calmer though in the last two sections here as there aren't nearly as many samples being played at once and then we have this that empty second or so. The final track is a little just more of this. I guess I could call it calm, but compared to everything else, that's just the only way to put it. What do you think of M1? One minute. Um, okay, so 
I'm reading something real quick. It'll only take like five seconds. Alright. But yes, M1 just goes into this vegetative state where horror is just replaced, being washed away. It's as if the mine is a sandcastle, and instead of melting at this point, it's just fading away. As we go on, there won't be too many more samples played in the final stage, but as for now, we do hear mournful camaraderie a lot, and some from Walger riding on a rainbow. And M1 does just dissolve into the state of nothingness, I'm not up sure how else to put it. So what do you think of M1? M1 is the best track in my opinion in stage five but kind of better than k1 it's a it's a, an, instead of stage four having reminders this is a reminder of the end is even more closer mm -hmm. and also just just a quick thing before we go to n1 anybody who watched con context switches videos and looked at his sample guides n1 came out like a few days ago or mm -hmm. like more than a few days ago so it's probably going to be maybe a week or two before context switch releases 01 which we hope we do because i'm super excited for 01 because nobody really knows what the sample we're on yeah there's a lot to say about that one all right so sorry for jump scaring you there but n1 definitely starts off very harsh gradations of arms lengths combined with poor inoculation makes just crashing of the void the way m1 ended off with The way it pop you'll hear the, the first note of all that falls is true popping very abundantly in this track, but poor enunciation seems to be the one that plays the most here. Sudden Time Regression into Isolation is an incredible track, and I'm still trying to figure out what that title could possibly mean. It's not really a condition of the brain where plaque is involved or you're regressing, but rather just as the description of stage 5 suggests, moments are spent only leading to the moments of isolation. And I think what this could even mean is regressing to the childlike state, but also to when you're isolated in your own mind. It starts off a lot more crazy than M1, but even this track will, will fade and will succumb to the void. There's some great samples being played here, and there are also some interesting notes here. I think I might know what the title means. What did you say? I think I said I think I might know what the title means. What? Regression means the act or instance of regressing, like a progressive decline of a manifestant manifestation or disease yeah. OS perfect state and yeah. it's gradual loss of differentiation yeah so, sudden time regression into isolation means a, at a sudden random time you start regressing into isolation which when the isolation starts um basically I'm just going to use stage 6 cover name it would just be a confusion so thick that you forget forgetting. Yeah, and maybe isolated as in, like, you're isolated in just this empty void, and you're no longer surrounded by the mess of memories. You also hear Sublime Beyond Lost pretty clearly at some points of the track. And we also hear a little bit of Stairway to the Stars, too. Some different piano medleys from Lightning and Johnston you can hear as well. This part of the track is honestly kind of calm. As we hear On the Edge of Breakdown and Ramona by Lightning and Johnston. And it's honestly one of the most calming parts of the track. What do you think of it? I love it. Mm, it's, even though it's past the vegetative state, at least you have some... You, at least you have some memories yeah. that are still chaotic. And then we get to that the one... Still, that's still chaotic and more fluid, but also not forming, really. Yeah. 
And this is where we get to the final clarity of stage five. The beginning of My Ohio Home by Leighton Johnston. And this is also the first few notes that will play in the great hidden sea of the unconscious, another great track from an empty bliss. It's at this point that memories are no longer being confused and you're no longer regressing. And this is where the void starts to come in and any memories will be crushed by it. Hello Tucky is also a song used a lot here and it, and it makes great use. There are great A Stairway to the Stars tracks and like people have said, that album does really remind me of Late Stage 5, probably because it's used so abundantly. This is what the rest of the track is going to sound like. In a way, N1 is a lot like J1, because it ends in just peace of tranquility and acceptance. But this time, it's just the mess of memories you hear at the beginning of K1 and L1, going to the regression of M1, like I said, but now just the emptiness of N1. And we're leading into stage six. What do you think of N1? N1 is the best, and it's one of the best. And if you skip near the end, all you will kind of hear is white noise, like stage six. Yeah. Even though stage five and stage six have like a perfect flow into each other, even I was a little jumped by stage six because it just starts with that booming void. This is all you really hear for the rest of the track. And it's honestly a masterfully done track, just as the J1 is. N1 is an incredible closer for the album. So, next I'd like to take a look at the album art, which might just be my favorite the entirety of Everywhere at the End of Time. Here we see a painting that I'm not even going to try the name. It's this mess of words with the word descending after. And... From what I can barely make out, it's a lady with a cane and a dress walking down the stairs. That could be her foot in the middle right here. This looks like some side of boulder, but I also hear people say she could be riding on something, and she's going down the stairs. What do you think of the painting? Well, I can try to pronounce it, but it's prob you guys are probably going to laugh at me, so... Epa... Tracks, your tracks are descending. That's all I can say. I'm sorry, but he, this probably my act, like you said, it's my fa my most favorite um cover art. Um, what I think it is, I think it's just a lady, um, lady like getting dancing with a man, and like, and like she's in the air or something like you know how some people do in like the old days where they dance, mm -hmm. and they're like they're on a little a piece of stairs and the boulder might represent there's only some memories from an empty bus beyond this world yeah and another thing i think it could be is a lady descending the stairs awaiting a dance if we had to put into context because each of the album art of everywhere at the end of time could represent something beautiful like a nice memory that's just been distorted and another thing about stages fives are is that it's no longer looking like a person in mourning, like we saw with Stages 4's art. But the way Ivan Seal masterfully creates this piece, and it's this jumbled mess of memories, but maybe her descending represents that soon enough nothing will be there but the stairs, or maybe the mind. I'm not sure. What do you think? Um, it's good. Yeah. Uh, so it really is a masterful art. Thank you for joining me once again. There was a lot to say about Stage 5, and honestly, it's tough to decide whether I like it more than Stage 4 or not. What do you think? It's, it's kind of better than Stage 4, to be honest. Yeah, and honestly, I think the way it's, tr it's transitioned into and the way it ends, I think, is masterfully done. And the way Stage 5 progresses is just a beauty of its own, kind of like Stage 3. So thank you for joining me next um, once again. And next time we'll discuss stage six, which is going to be even crazier to talk about. Do you have anything else to say? Um, thank you guys for watching. Have a good day. All right. Bye.